family that is here, members of the FIFA family that are here, and more, more importantly, the clubs that are joining us. I see Alakli, TP Mazembe, and a number of other clubs that are going to be playing this weekend. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the trophy reveal. I have not seen it, so it's brand new. It's on our right-hand side here. A lot of anxiety and a lot of excitement about it, but the person who's going to be revealing it is next to me, the president of CAF, who's going to give us the opening remarks, and, of course, our general secretary, Mr. Veron Mosengo Omba. We also acknowledge his presence here today. Mr. President, please. Thank you. Uh, it's on? Is it on? It's on. Yes. You can hear me? Thank you. Thank you so much. Just a few quick remarks. Uh, I want to start by uh, just thanking uh, a number of very important people who've really spent sleepless nights, huge sacrifices, huge passion, huge commitment. I want to start with my brother Gianni Infantino for really for the immense contribution and, uh, and his commitment. Uh, you know, all of us, uh, we, we have limited periods within which we want to try and make a humble contribution, and in this case to the development of, uh, of football in Africa. And I think uh, in the midst of a lot of the exceptional things that FIFA and Gianni has done, uh, this is one of the most outstanding the African Football League is a CAF competition. Uh, CAF is uh, the entity that's leading this process, and but we are excited to have the partnership of, of FIFA, and, and at a personal level, I'm very excited for the commitment uh, of, of uh, Gianni Infantino. I want to thank Andrea, excellent work, and the team, and I very special thanks to Mario. Uh, Romy and the best referee in the world, the whole team, and uh, the, the, the African Football League uh, team that is here, the, the leadership that is provided by CAF, as well as the partnership that we have with, uh, with FIFA. Uh, Minister, thank you so much. We had an excellent meeting this morning with the President uh, in uh, Dodoma. And uh, the minister flew back with me, with my brother Wallace. I'm very proud of the good work you're doing, Wallace, uh, in, in Tanzania. And just before I make further remarks, very special thanks and very special acknowledgement to my brother Veron. He's underpaid, overworked, abused. But uh, thank God his love is still there. And proud of the good work you do, uh, uh, Lutkolo, and the whole team. The team from from uh, CAF and once more very unique thanks to the legends who are here and to FIFA. Now two quick issues. I uh, had a very brief discussion with us and now before I came, and one of the most important objectives for African football is we have to win on the field of play. You, African football will only get the the recognition, the respect it deserves by winning on the field of play. And the African Football League is one of the most important partnerships, foundations that is going to make a huge contribution to making sure that African football is globally competitive. But you know, African football spectators do not watch European football or Brazilian football. Uh, let me put it this way. They love European football, they watch it, they watch Brazilian football, they also watch football from all over the world. That is exciting, that is talented, that is attractive, and, and that wins. So we are proud because we've produced some of the best players in the world, and, and there's a clear understanding that we have to make African football attractive. And, and the most attractive way is to win. And Amongst the most attractive ways is Jokaev, so good to see you, eh? and all the special le legends. Thank you so much for coming. And my Vice President Suleiman, so good to see you. So at one of the most attractive ways to showcase African football is at the highest level in the world, at the World Cup. And that's why I'm, I keep saying we are so proud of what Morocco has done, make history, take us to the semifinal. The next World Cup, it is the next level. We've been to the semi-final, we've broken, uh, we've, we've surpassed 
where we have ever been in the past. The next level is we've got to be in the finals. And there's most probably uh, 10, 12 African nations, including those that are a little bit... Uh, I was going to say something about... Maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh, I was going to say something about South Africa. But the point I was going to say is that some countries that have so much potential and, and a DRC, Veron, South Africa, I mean, a whole lot. My job is every... Uh, uh, Suleiman says Djibouti as well. Djibouti as well, it's fine. I'm proud of Tanzania. Uh, and that's why I'm proud of East Africa. I'm very proud of every single one of the 54 African nations. There are some that have got exceptional potential. Nigeria, Algeria, Senegal. As I said, uniquely proud of all of them, but particularly Morocco has laid a, tar a target for us. And I'm confident that we will we'll get there. Part of my job is to lay the foundation, as I always say. The people who take over from me must keep on building, keep on building, and, and make African football even better, more competitive, achieving greater success. And more importantly, we are going to get that trophy coming to Africa. The, the World Cup will come to Africa, but it starts with the investment we have to make. We have to invest in our youth. We've got to build academies. Uh, the school's football is something I'm passionate about, and that's why you know, the Family Foundation was very honored to make a donation of 10 million because it's something we're excited about. Uh, developing football amongst boys and girls at a young age. The, the clubs that are participating in the African Football League, it's incredible. Many of the club owners have complained. You know, we participate in TAF CAF competitions, and by the end, you win a trophy. Now, the family club won were champions of Africa in 2016. Now, I know because we spent more money than what we, what we received. So, we launched the African Club Association. We had an excellent meeting a few weeks ago. I was very excited that uh, my brother, Bibo, Bibo came, he was supposed to be in hospital from Malachli. He came there and said, President, I'm here because this is exciting. I want to be part of the African Club Association. I'm very proud of Muhammad. Muhammad is not here. The chairman of uh, Yanga. I saw my brother Moise. I'm proud of every single one of the eight clubs that are participating in the African Football League and the 24 that will be participating in the fully fleshed uh, African Football League next year. So you've got to look at the African Football League within the context of our goal, our objectives. What are we trying to achieve? And, and part of what we are trying to achieve is at club level. We want African football clubs to be globally competitive. Again, they must win on the field of play. When they participate in the FIFA club championships, FIFA world club championships, they've got to do well. TP Mazembe made us proud by going once to the semi-final. We've got to do better. And there are many clubs that can, uh, that can get us there. So we're going to start today with a historic game. Uh, I'm excited that we're starting in East Africa because this is a place that has got huge potential. We've seen the exceptional talent in, in West Africa. We've seen the exceptional talent in North Africa. We know that there's exceptional talent in Central and Southern Africa. One of the tests for us is what are the spectators saying? When you've got 60, 70,000 spectators at the football game, it's exciting. When you've got hundreds of millions of football spectators watching TV at home, it's exciting. We had close to 600 million people watching the AFCON in Cameroon. Exciting. The African Football League is going to showcase the very best. The very best of football players in Africa and we want the football players to get good money, to be paid good money, paid competitive money. I know from experience because over the last 20 years I had to buy, you know, acquire, compete for some of the best players in from Africa, uh, those who goes to Denmark, go to Sweden, go to Belgium, goes to other parts. We paid more than what they could get in those parts of Europe. But of course, 
other parts of Europe, you know, the salaries are much, much higher. And we want African football players to go and play wherever they can get the highest amount of income. Because football is a short career, and we always advise them, make as much money as you can. Invest some of that money for the days when you don't play football. Part of the duty we have. But one of the objectives of the African Football League is to keep some of the very best. Keep them in the continent, pay them well, and make sure that the quality of football in the African Football League is globally competitive. Now, uh, Pierre Luigi. Pierre Luigi. <laughs> okay, wonderful name. The most outstanding coach, coach, the most outstanding coach for referees, the most outstanding referee I in the world, in the views of men, including mine. VAR, very important, because I, the, the, the club owners keep complaining to me that we must get the standard of refereeing consistently improving, thanks to FIFA, thanks to Gianni, this partnership of training African referees. Our referees are as good as the best in the world, and we want to make sure that in the African Football League, both the referee on the field, the VAR, world class. And uh, Asen was outside. I said to him, we must speed up this process because uh, this talent identification work that Asen is doing, huge potential. Identify the best young players in every country in Africa, train them, provide them with the skills. But the football skill must go hand in hand with education, world class education. Because some of the best players in the world, even those who've got exceptional talent, some of the very best, and I think of Socrates. I don't know when I was a young boy, they said Socrates. Voron says Socrates is from the DRC, not that one. I'm talking about Socrates from Brazil. Doctor. Doctor Socrates. Anyway, so those are some of the few remarks. Very exciting. A journey we're, go we're proceeding with. The, f the future of African club football will never be the same again. Uh, th this this uh, African Football League is changing African club competition for the better, making it extremely competitive, making it globally competitive. And part of the competitiveness is the prize money. You know, we've, we've got we've to make sure that the prize money for CAF competitions are world class and, and make sure that some of that money uh, uh, goes into the pockets of the players because you will improve your chances of winning by attracting the best, and you attract the best by paying amongst the best. And, and of course, we want some of that money also to go to paying the staff that works for the clubs well. But, so we'll take a few questions because I know uh, Wallace wants to show me and the president of FIFA some of the beautiful work mm -hmm. that he's doing in Tanzania. And I want to wish Simba, I was told that uh, in in uh, in Tanzania, there there's a there's Simba and there's there's Yanga, and I must always say I love both of them, which I do, and I love every other club because my job is my duty is to every single club in Africa. So we'll go and see the good work that uh, Wallace is doing with the support he's been receiving from the FIFA Forward Initiative, which is exciting. We'll take a few questions. The best of luck for all of those clubs, every single one of them. We wish them all of the best. And next year, we're going to start off with 24 of the very best, the highest ranked, uh, the most successful, and the most popular football clubs on the African continent. And we've always known a globally competitive African Football League contributes immensely to a globally competitive African national team to a globally competitive net, uh, AFCON and to making sure that f African football in its totality is, is world class and globally competitive. Okay, let's take questions. All right, thank you, President. I'll take a few questions. Uh, start, just uh, raise your hand and then you can identify yourself. I'll start with the gentleman. I see you don't have anything for translating here because you see I spend a lot of time in French speaking Africa. It should be okay, President. It yeah. should be okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> but All please right. speak whatever language you want. If you, if can you just want to take speak them. if you want to speak in French and Arabic, you know, these are some of our beautiful languages, Spanish, just proceed. And then we'll get a translator. Just in the middle. The gentleman who's wearing a blue shirt. Let's start with the lady first. Is there a lady here? Okay, whilst the ladies are making up their mind we will if you can just bring gentleman. it here in, in the middle. Oh, uh, 
The lady has got a question. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Give her yes. Thank you. Thank you. Just introduce yourself for the benefit. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maria Borges from Angola, supermodel, and Muito, Angolan. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado. And Angolan, uh, the first tourism ambassador. Growing up in a Portuguese community, one of the strongest on the football, namely Brazil and Portugal. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Mo Dr. Mississippi. I'm, yeah. I'm grateful that I have to be uh, back in 2019 for Global Citizen Mandela 100 you and support your charity. Yes, I oh, was there. Beautiful. You were dancing there with Beyonce and James. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. But I, I mainly came for the charity. Absolutely. So my question is, what can, what can we do to inspire many countries in Africa to enjoy this amazing opportunity for the next generation to come, which is the African Football League. You're because everyone needs to be a big part of it. Thank you. What a brilliant question. Let's clap hands for it. You want to see a brilliant, brilliant question. Th thank you so much. Uh, and, and of course, uh, there's a wonderful club from Angola that's participating. There's a great game taking place. And uh, what, what I like is what you said. You know, we, we've got to get, in America, I used to work uh, in the U.S., uh, basketball is, uh, and s uh, as well as the football, uh, but the football that's like an egg, and they run with it. Uh, we call it rugby in, uh, in, in other parts of the world. They, they, they focus so much on the youth and on the academies. I must say some of the best football players in America, uh, the other football, not the, we are the real football. The other one. Uh, are young Africans from uh, who go to college in America, from different parts of Africa. What we like about Africa is that football is in our DNA. It's it's you know we live, we sleep, we talk, we walk football, and and that's what's very exciting. And and, and that's why we are encouraging young Africans, both boys and girls, to look at football as a future. I mean, you know, uh, I had a press conference a few weeks ago. And when we grew up, if a young girl told her mother, you know, mommy, my boyfriend plays football, the mother says, oh my God, they don't earn money, they've got no money, they've got no future, and some of them uh, haven't got a history of like, you know, enjoying being in school. It's the opposite. Uh, going to school is fun. Uh, and that's why, you know, we concentrate as well as on making sure that our children get quality education, but also side by side with that, we develop the unique talents and skills that they have. I want to thank you for the good work you're doing. And the other thing as well, you spoke about music. You know, every time I'm invited to an NBA game or to the Super Bowl, there's music as well. So Samson is not here. We've got a beautiful music event today because in Africa, we, we, we sing when we have weddings and when we celebrate and we also sing when we're not so happy. You know, at funerals and when we've lost uh, loved ones. But the issue for us is is to make sure that uh, we keep this partnership, this this uh, synergy as well between world class football and music as well, because music is part of our culture. Thank you so much. Next question with okay. a shorter answer. You know, the ladies, we've got to give long answers. If, if you can sit down, because of the live streaming behind you. All right. Thanks, Lux. My name is Yuma Ayo from Tanzania. Yes, I'm also writing to African Soccer Update from South Africa. Okay, I have only two questions, Mr. President. My question is, uh, you, are paying, uh, you are paying a total of $14.4 million to the teams playing in the African Football League. Uh, where is this money coming from? Uh, we pray very hard. It comes from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And uh, lastly, uh, currently, I had some disputes with the bean sport over the calf. Uh, says that uh, there is over eighty million dollars is unpaid. This is about TV's right. Where is this current state of these disputes? Uh, Thanks very much. Good question. Two issues. Uh, in order for African football, and we're talking today about the African Football League, to to get sponsors and partners excited the quality, and some people talk about the product, but it, it means that the quality of football 
has to be attractive and appealing and and the the customers or the the buyers the consumers that the businesses want to associate with must want to to watch the football and 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 uh, and find it attractive about 800 million dollars i think that's the number more or less that 800 million american dollars is the number that is being paid every year for for broadcasting rights outside Africa. And and our people are doing that because they love football, but also because they love the football that they see that is outside as much as they love the football that we have in Africa. So part of my of our duty is to make sure that you know in the context of being in sport. Listen, I can tell you every single one of my sponsors past and future are uh, are very special to me uh, and are my partners and I've got a uh, CAF has got a duty and an obligation to them it's normal <clears throat> in any partnership there are times when there are different views and and different perspectives and I'm clear from a CAF perspective I want as much money as possible uh, but I also am clear that you know uh, I've got a business background uh, when you inherit agreements that were concluded before you acquired in fact before I became president of CAF the starting point is you've got to respect those agreements, whether you like it or not. That's 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 the ethics and that's a culture within which you know uh, oh, that I've uh, that I've been trained and uh, and that I have uh, uh, worked under for the last 35 odd years. So the the discussions with Bain and uh, you know, I'm very happy with all of my partners because uh, a duty I also have is 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 to protect my partner, so I don't discuss issues that relates to uh, matters between me and my partners. But just to conclude, I'm very excited and I'm very happy with every single one of the current sponsors. I can tell you, even those that concluded agreements with CAF before I became president, those agreements are binding, I respect them, but it doesn't take away my duty to go to some of our current sponsors and say, listen, we did a deal with you, you paid us a million dollars. And just understand, I respect past agreements, whether I agree or disagree with them. But the second thing is, you know, I need more money. But I can only request more money if the quality of African football justifies it. And, and it proves that there's progress. And there's some basic things like governance, ethics, accounting practices, transparency. You know, I'm excited. Uh, somebody was telling me uh, recently, President, the way that you chose the Afcon, the Afcon was allocated to Morocco and to Tanzania and to and to Uganda and Kenya. It, it has never happened before. It was transparent. It was open. It was ethical because the people who had to decide. Had, were exposed to the documents in their totality and, and asked questions. Anyway, thank you for the question. Next. Next question from Egypt. If you yes. can sit down, that will be great. Okay. Mr. President, my name is Omar Sophie from Abu Dhabi TV Sports. Channel. Abu Dhabi. Yes. Uh, I want to ask you uh, in Arabic, as you say. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, Tariq will translate. <laughs> okay, please, please. We are proud of all of our languages. Yeah. Arabic, Spanish, Portuguese. Please speak Swahili, speak whatever language. Please Shukuzet proceed. Shukran, uh, shukran. 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 Okay. Uh, you, can you listen, Tariq? Yeah. <laughs> no, I trust him. He lived too many years in New York, so he's... He, he's okay, continue. <laughs> Please proceed. In Arabic. Yes. Please. Okay. Ahal tawafarat awam al najah dauri al Afrik al Kurt al Qadam, khususan in yani al Muktama al Riyadi fi Afrik ya al Muktama al Karo fi Afrik ya. عايز البطولة تكون ناجحة على مدار سنوات مش بس الموسم ده فهل في خلال السنوات المقبلة نقدر نور ان الافريكا ليج هيكون مكمل بشكل كبير جدا وهيكون واخد الريادة في البطولات المحلية او البطولات القرية الافريقية محمد تابت can somebody give محمد the mic please give him the mic so, sorry we should have always have three roving mics okay uh, do you think that the African Football League will take the lead in the um, CAF competitions in the next few years? And also, do you think that uh, the African Football League 
has got enough support to succeed in the next, I mean, in this edition and also for the future? Yeah. Excellent question. The African Football League will significantly contribute to the improvement in the quality of the other CAF competitions, and including the CAF club competitions, uh, the Champions League. But I'm also, we're all confident, it will have a huge contribution to improving the quality of national team football. Uh, we, are, we are very confident and, and uh, you know, the gentleman before was talking about the 14 million, which is money that comes from our sponsors and people that see value and are excited about the African Football League. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm excited that uh, we did this inaugural part of the African Football League in, uh, in June next year. It's going to be fully fleshed. And let me, t let me tell you something else as well. Uh, we are also learning because in our engagement with the, uh, with the federations and in the engagement and the communication of the federations with their professional leagues, issues relating to fixtures, issues relating to uh, infrastructure, matters relating to the broadcasting rights and uh, to make sure that uh, we get cooperation from the host country uh, as far as uh, visas are concerned, assistance at the airports. Uh, we are we're making good progress, and it can just, in relation to your it can just get better and better. And what I like is the sponsors are seeing huge value. You know, don't expect sponsors to partner with you if you don't have an exciting proposition to present. So we, African Football League is exciting. And what excites me even more is when the sponsors are saying, we want to be part of this. We love it. Next question. Okay, I'll take the last two questions before we depart. Uh, the last four questions. <laughs> Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Je vais poser la question en français. Merci, merci beaucoup. Just one quick question. I, I have to acknowledge a huge thank you to all of our sponsors. You saw when we had the draw, uh, the president of football from Saudi was my special guest, sat next to me throughout the whole process. So visit Saudi. Thank you so much for your sponsorship and various others. And uh, visit Rwanda. Thank you so much for your sponsorship as well. I mean, that money is going for the best purposes. Your sponsorship is going to make African football amongst the best in the world. <laughs> merci, merci. Thank you so much. Eh? I like visit Rwanda. The next time I see President Kagame, uh, I'm very proud of the good work that, that he's doing in. Jean-Tis Montombo de merci. la République démocratique du Congo. Alors, uh, uh, just hold on. Now, uh, Voron, you are going to translate, eh? The problem, <laughs> you know, the problem with Veron is he says he only translates if I pay him, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Alors, moi, j'ai une question très simple. Euh, quelle est votre réaction par rapport euh, à ce qui s'est passé au désagrément que vous avez rencontré avec euh, le TP Mazembe qui est obligé de venir euh, jouer euh, ici et quelle était la conséquence initiale euh, si euh, par moment on parlait euh, même de la disqualification du, euh, du TP de l'African Football League est-ce que ça a été une option uh, The Merci. question of the gentleman from DRC is that uh, what, what your reaction regarding the issue of the TP Mazembe where um, the, the government of uh, DRC didn't deliver the visa for the team who was supposed to go there. And apparently, he said that uh, we foreseen a, san uh, a sanction against uh, TP Mazembe. A, a sanction by who? Uh, by uh, CAF. CAF, CAF yeah. Yeah. No, 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 two things. Number one is um, football is meant to bring people together. And, and uh, I'm always excited because you know, uh, people who belong come from different backgrounds, speak different languages, are from uh, different racial backgrounds, belong to different religious organizations, come from different cultural upbringings. When it comes to football, they embrace, and uh, we are all citizens of the DRC. We are all citizens of Rwanda. We are all citizens of of Tanzania. The same applies to every other country in Africa. So our focus is to make sure that those issues 
where there are problems and, and I've uh, given an instruction that the matter is being looked at as we speak because uh, we have a duty from CAF as well as from the African Football League that uh, the rules and the regulations that are in place have to be complied with, uh, non-negotiable, no compromise. And the other thing as well is that the partnerships we have with governments, uh, th those partnerships are based on mutual respect but also mutual cooperation. And I'm, you know, I can, I'm privileged that uh, I've got a very good relationship with President Sisekedi, a very good relationship with Moise. They're all my brothers, have been and will always be. Because uh, the DRC is a country that's very close to my heart. Very, very close to my heart. I got my name from the DRC, Patrice Lumumba. You know, I always say I had a Catholic priest when I was a young boy uh, who was Irish, and he said, what is this thing called Patrice? Uh, there's no Patrice in, 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 uh, in, Af in South Africa. You should be called Patrick. So I went to my father. I said, no, I'm tired now. My father said, if I wanted to call you Patrick, I would have called you Patrick. But the last time I checked, Limumba was Patrice. So stay with Patrice. So, so uh, what I'm saying is that uh, I'm be I'll be getting a report because this matter is being investigated. But at the end of the day, one of the most important things for us, you know, I always feel proud when I see that FIFA logo, football unites, football unites people. Football brings people together. And that's why from a CAF perspective, we've emphasized over and over again, football is an important tool to bring people and Africans together. And also, not just to bring people on the continent together, but also Africa and Europe. Africa and the rest of the world. So I, I'm confident that uh, uh, those issues, whatever problems, you see, he heard me speak, that's why he came in now. <laughs> uh, Moise, they were asking this important question about, uh, about TP Mazembe, uh, and I was uh, bragging about the fact that you made history with TP Mazembe, uh, Moise, by taking uh, by taking TP Mazembe to the highest level that an African football club could ever go. Semi-finals of the FIFA Club World Cup. And your duty and the duty of all of the other uh, 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 club presidents is to, to go further because you, you've made history. So to go from semi-finals in the World Cup to the final, Moise, and to bring that cup to to the DRC. So I was just concluding as you came in to say that uh, the question was asked about the, uh, the problems that your team has been experiencing and Esperance and the issues that uh, we are very clear that our partnership with governments, the governments have to cooperate. And, and I can proudly say that, you know, uh, you are here. You are not just my friend, you are my brother. And I can say the same thing about President Tisekedi. He's not just he's my brother. We all have to work together and, and, and make sure that the good work that you are doing and that TP Mazembe is doing, as well as Esperance, uh, that we succeed. Let's clap hands for us and Venga, please. <laughs> and, and the reason why I said we must clap hands is because of what I said when he wasn't here. <laughs> Aston is doing, well, before you arrived, Aston, I was saying that you are doing exceptional work, exceptional work with this talent identification. And what I like as well about the talent identification is it goes hand in hand with education because the work that you are doing will have amongst the greatest contribution to making sure that African club football and national football is world class. Anyway, uh, good to see you and good to see Moise. Next question. Thank you, President. We go to the back maybe. Yeah. yeah, if you can give it the gentleman just behind you. There we go. Abari uh, Zamchana, Mabibi na Mabwana, Yenaguni Abdul Jalil Mohammed Salu. Okay, uh, uh, what is, you must listen now. Yenaguni Abdul Jalil Mohammed Salum, Kutokea Shirika la Utangazaji Zanzibar. So langu kwa kwa Raisi Wakaf ni kwa ni yapi mawazo yako juu ya watu ambao wanafikiri Africa Football League itakwenda kuyua uh, CAF Confederation Cup and CAF Champions League. Uh, uh, what is your opinion uh, about the African Football League 
most of the people think that it is going to kill Confederation and Champions League Africa. Good question. As I said earlier, the African Football League is going to significantly uplift and improve. Because Moise, one of the biggest problems of clubs, they participate in these CAF competitions and they, they, they lose money. They spend a hell of a lot of money, much, much more money than what they get. It's not sustainable. Not sustainable at all. So part of our job is to make sure that huge prize money, and, and I'm excited because you know, the, the, the discussions and the plans that have been put in place with all of the clubs, part of the focus is to, it's, we want African football clubs to be profitable. We want them to be commercially viable. So I'm, I said earlier, the African Football League is gonna significantly improve the quality of the African Champions League and of course, we, we will be reviewing all of the African uh, competitions because we can't have too many competitions. We've got to have the appropriate number of competitions at the, that are globally competitive, right quality, huge amount of excitement amongst uh, sponsors and spectators. So uh, as I said, it's, you know, I answered this question earlier and I'm confident that uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see the results of the, the huge magnitude and contribution of African football like to the quality of African football. Next question. You know, sorry. I think this man is a member of the Communist Party. He goes to the left all the time. Oh, sorry, President. Can you, can you also go to the right? You know, and give sorry, others, go this way. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't yeah. raise their hand before, yeah, no, President. Give them. I'm saying, you know, all, we want people to be in the center. Don't go too much to the right wing or the left wing. Keep them in the center. Yes. Ah, sante. Jina langu naitua Jamila Kasim, natokea WRM TV na Spirit FM, natatoka nje kidogo ya A AFL, kwa mana ya African Football League. Kwako raisi wa shirikisho la mpira wa migu barani Afrika, bado tunakabiliwa na changamoto kubwa ya viwanja. Kama shirikisho, pengine jitiada zipi zinafanyika kujilia kwa kikisha viwanja vinaboreshu? Give him the mic. She spoke Swahili, eh? Swahili is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful language. Beautiful language. She said that he's going out of uh, this African league, but he, she's what? going out of the African football league. Yes. What do you mean? The topic. The oh, she's the topic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she's going to leave the room and go out. <laughs> what? What? He, she said that there's a challenge of uh, football stadium and pitches. Yeah. What is your initiative to make sure that this? Uh, Problem is sorted. Tell a brilliant question. That's why I had a meeting with the president. I left South Africa at 2 o'clock in the morning and I went straight to Dodoma to meet the president. Amazing. I met uh, the president of Tanzania in Davos at the World Economic Forum and uh, we, had, uh, we were supposed to spend 30 minutes. We spent a, a long time. I'm excited. And one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is about the AFCON. I mean, you know, we've made history, and thanks to the excellent leadership that our brothers and sisters here, we've made history because we are bringing back the AFCON to East Africa after 51 years. The last time AFCON was in, Af in East Africa was 51 years. And the issue about all our competitions, whether it's the African Football League, whether it's the AFCON, whether it's the Champions League, we want stadiums that are at the level of FIFA and CAF. Quality stadium, quality pitches. As I said, uh, Pierre Luigi's presence here, incredible. Quality coaches, uh, as well as VAR. So what I wanted to engage with her today was of course to tell about the African Football League, but also to tell her, Madam President, I mean, you know, uh, history is being made in East Africa. The, the most, the biggest national team competition is coming back to East Africa for the first time in 51 years. Now, it requires partnerships because Veron is going back to Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, the excitement in Cote d'Ivoire for next year, immense. Your players will be playing, <laughs> carrying the flag of the DRC in, and various others. So we need those stadiums to be world class. Uh, we needed generators to be functioning and to be tested. 
We need to make sure the hospitals and the infrastructure and the pitches for training, world class. So it's an excellent question, and I'm, I'm so happy that the president said, I just, I just want to give you, Patrice, I just want to give you all the confidence that we're going to work together, we're going to invest, and we're going to make sure that, that it is amongst the very best AFCONs ever. I think stay a little bit with the right wing. Yes. I'll just take the last question this side and maybe the last question this side, yeah. Mason, just because of time. Okay, we'll go to this side as well. No, no, give, the back. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. There's a gentleman from this side. There he is. He's been, his hand has been up for some time. Thank you. And then we'll finish on this side with the last question. Okay. okay thank you. My name is Hussein Shafi from Tanzania Broadcasting Corporation, TBC. I have two questions. Uh, one is about uh, VAR. You talk about VAR. <laughs> And uh, Tanzania League, uh, Premier League particular, we don't have VAR, and uh, most of African league, uh, I mean, leagues, they don't have VAR. And you can see in a few years to come, we will host uh, 2027 AFCON. So it's very important to have VAR. Will you assist us in VAR? That's uh, one question. Uh, another one, uh, we see a lot of people here, uh, particular football uh, prominent people. So are you proud to bring them in Tanzania? I'm proud to have you in this room. <laughs> Very proud. And, and, and I want to repeat again, to, you know, to have the quality of people that are here, the FIFA president, the FIFA team, I mean, world class, to have us and Venga, and also to have our brothers and sisters who are leaders of some of the top clubs, to have Moise, uh, Tanzania is a special country. Remember, this is the country of Mualimu. It's a country of uh, Julius Nyerere. And uh, has produced some of the most outstanding Africans. And, and that's why, you know, we, we feel so proud that... Uh, let, let me say this to you. Uh, we, we have a duty to the rest of the continent to develop and to bring focus on, on football and, and, and inspire the young football spectators in those countries to play and to do well. But part of our duty also is to, is to focus on those parts of the continent that are a little bit behind. And as I said, there hasn't been an AFCON here for 51 years. So, and, and I mean, to have Tanzania and Uganda and Kenya coming together, it's exciting. I was saying to the President this morning, I, I mean, look at what football is doing. Football is making a unique contribution to, to the togetherness of our people and the pride of East Africans as African. And, and let me say this to you. The coming together of these three special countries goes beyond football. It's, it's a coming together about our cultures, our people. And, and that translates into partnerships, to trade, business partnerships, investment, job creation, tourism. Am I going to help uh, in the VR, I can tell you, we don't, in every single competition of CAF, there has to be VR. There's something called light VR, and, and, and uh, the light VR, and I understand that cost associated, uh, but we are aggressively training uh, all the time. Veron is doing excellent work in the referees committee, aggressively training some of our referees and others who have the capacity to be VR operators, because, you know, you, you want to you want to win because the referee didn't make a mistake. Because referees are human. On the other hand, you also don't want to lose because, because of human error. So we are consistently engaging and looking at what should be done because as a starting point, I mean, some of the biggest leagues in, in, on the continent, I mean, VR should be an essential part of, of how they ref the games. One quick point. Where you see players, and I see it, if you see players who come from countries where there's no VR, the minute they go into VR, some of the dangerous tackles that they got away with where there isn't VR, I mean, the consequences are far-reaching. So, you know, the sooner our players get used to playing with VR, and they understand that you've got to be careful now. You can't go in there reckless and just be, you know, take, take out the next player. Good question. Thank you. Next. Go to the last question, and then afterwards, the trophy reveal. 
Nazareth. Um, there's, there's, there's a lady there. The lady so will have the last finish with the lady. Right. And if there's any other lady, we'll also finish with you. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm Nazareth Upeto from TBC, Tanzania Broadcasting Corporation. I'm so delighted with uh, such aims of this football league, uh, African Football League, including the inspiration for young uh, women generation. And whenever we're talking about that generation, I don't know how we're going to glorify this uh, football generation, a uh, football inheritance generation for these women that you have been talking uh, for young girls. And my second question is. Uh, one of the important uh, strategies that we have been employed in uh, spreading football in the world is including the FTA matches. I mean, free uh, FTA. Yes, I mean, free to air matches. To oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I thought it was uh, another name for the Tanzanian Football Federation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, football yeah. uh, free to air That's matches. That's right. Yeah. So I want to know, uh, Kaf, are you thinking about having any such FTAs? A lot in your uh, competition to spread a uh, football Africa uh, football game in uh, of Africa, maybe uh, especially for this uh, women women teams. We know uh, it has been in a doldrum start of these uh, competitions, including uh, women teams. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant question. I mean, I'm excited. I was telling the president this morning uh, in the schools, African schools football championship uh, in South Africa. I saw the young girls from Tanzania. They were the best. And they got 400,000. 400,000, Ron? Yeah. They got $400,000. Now, that money is not supposed to go to having a party or you know, having a long celebration. It goes to building football infrastructure at their schools. It also goes to building educational infrastructure. I mean, we've done this with the Mutsepia Foundation in South Africa for the last 20 years, where we sponsor schools football. And when you win, you take the money to build infrastructure at the schools. And football infrastructure, as well as academics, some have used the money to build, you know, laboratories, libraries, you know, uh, technology centers. So the prize money there, the 400000 is an exciting uh, money to be used to develop the schools, uh, the girls' schools, schools uh, uh, football, uh, at the schools where the girls are, and and we've also there was no prize money for the Champions League, women's Champions League. We've you know, we've significantly increased the prize money for the women's Champions. This country's got talent, eh? Tanzania has got incredible talent, and uh, and I can tell you, you know. The work that Wallace and the leadership is doing, your under-17 was in the FIFA World Cup and, and went to the quarterfinals in, in India. Lots of great things are being done. And, and sometimes, you know, you, you've, got, you've got to understand that the, the results of doing the right thing takes time. You know, sometimes it, the, the, you don't see the results overnight. We are not here for the short term, we are here for the long term. And the second question was, uh, yeah, will you respond to that quickly? No, no, no. You are Secretary General. You respond to that. Free to air. He's my, he's my right hand. Uh, but especially the free to air in the house is, uh, is, uh, is Luciolo. Oh, you want him to talk? Okay, talk, Luciolo. Thank you, President. I think uh, we're recognizing the role of FTAs in, in really making football popular. CAF, even in the upcoming uh, Total Energies Africa of Nations, is putting a number of games on free to airs. We've got the Women's Champions League starting on the 5th. It's going to be live. All the start, matches start, on Start with, the with this one. Talk about the African Football League well, and the exciting thing about free to air. Talk about Well, it. the free to air, again, the access of uh, African Football League uh, on free to air. Most of the matches, even in here in Tanzania, is going to be live on free to air. Most parts of the continent, I know that in Morocco, in South Africa, in, um, in a number of countries, including Rwanda and others, it's going to be live on free-to-air. So free-to-air plays a very important part in Africa because it creates access to the people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and CAF has made sure, has ensured that football is accessible to all the Africans. It's very important. We, we've, got to, we've got to market, we've got to popularize, we've got to create an increased amount of awareness of football throughout the country. I remember as a young boy, you know, I, I spent some time 
in Swaziland, but also in South Africa, it's called Eswatini now. And there was free La uh, Italian football, German football, English football, free. But when you watch it as a young boy, and the same applies for, you know, for young girls who are watching it, you develop a sense of excitement, uh, allegiance, f interest, that, and you are a part of a market. So this free-to-air uh, strategy and process <coughs> on our side, critically important to create a greater awareness, involvement, exposure, and make football exciting, attractive, commercially viable and appealing. The lady there, oh, sorry, you tell the lady, because she wants you to tell her. You have the last question, please, madam. Thank you. My name is Fatma Sanjay. from BBC. Uh, I uh, have is it BBC? Swahili. Ah. Yeah. British Broadcasting Corporation Swahili. Yeah. I hope they pay you in pounds, eh? <laughs> <laughs> in the British pounds. Continue. Thank you, Mr. President. I have like one question. Uh, football is any other profession, like we, we other people do in some profession. So I have like, since it is profession like any other profession, and the main aim is to improve footballers' life through payments. Uh, should we expect to see this kind of competition in women division? And do you have any future plans in improving in terms of those women, those women who are participating in football? Thank you. You know, uh, remember the majority of people in Africa are women and girls. You cannot develop anything in Africa without a very particular and a peculiar focus on women and uh, uh, yeah, we, we've done great things to develop women's football I mean I was talking earlier about the uh, there's about 50,000 schools that took part schools equal number of boys and girls took part uh, it's not your number this number took part in the African schools uh, championship and uh, these young girls at, at school who play football, they're the ones who are going to take Tanzania to the World Cup. And I can tell you what I saw in South Africa with those young girls. I, I tell you, it's, 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 that is God-given talent. But, but also, you know, we need the, the broadcasting companies and the sponsors to partner with us. You know... Uh, they, they, they give me money for men football, which is great. And I want as much money as possible because that money goes to development. But I equally want <coughs> as much money as possible for women's football. But you must also understand that you know, our capacity to, to, to extract as much money, finance, for women's football goes hand in hand with how we market it and how we promote it. So I, I'm, you know, I'm happy because I know in some countries on Sunday, they play women's football, and it's becoming popular and growing. Okay, now there's nobody here who would who would feel very unhappy if we left without having answered that question. So you are all happy that we can leave without having answered your question, because if you do feel that you'll be unhappy, we'll ask you. I see a hand there. Now, because you will be unhappy if we leave without answering your question, please proceed and ask your question. Habari, na ito atima sikilo, tokea Zanzibar leo. Raisi, ningependa kufahamu, mchakato wa kuifanya African Football League, ifanyike Tanzania ufunguzi, ulikuwa na ugumu au rahisi kwa kiasi gani. Lakini pia, ningependa kufahamu, matayarisho na mapokezi ambayo meapata hapa, meapokea kwa namna gani. I'm going to tell, when I go back to South Africa, I'm going to tell all of those employees who come from my village, they must only talk Swahili with me. <laughs> if they don't talk Swahili with me, I'm not going to answer them. Okay, now there's the last question, uh, my brother. What was the difficulties in the process of uh, say that uh, Tanzania will host the first game of uh, African Football League? What was the difficulty? What the difficulty? The difficulty, difficulties in the process. 
Well, well they've succeeded. So whatever the process was, uh, <laughs> to me, <laughs> oh, I hear. Yeah, you see, that's why he's minister. <laughs> that, that's why he's. Uh, we sp we, we spent some time. We we flew together. We flew from Dodoma, and uh, I I was telling the minister and uh, and that uh, Wallace, when we announced that uh, Tanzania and Uganda and Kenya, uh, I think Wallace didn't realize he he shouted. He said yo yo yo, and and they taped him and a few others. But that was the expression of the excitement. And uh, now, because it has to do with this question, uh, in relation to the process, what difficulty did we have in identifying Tanzania? Now, three things. I've emphasized from day one that we have to spread the competitions to all zones and all parts of Africa. It's very important. We've got a duty to develop football throughout the African continent. And uh, it hasn't been, the, the, the most, the AFCON has not been in East Africa for the last 51 years. So already that brought some focus that, you know, uh, we kept talking about the need to do that. But the other thing as well is, I mean, people from this area did excellent work. Waberi, Suleiman, the whole team. Because you've got to convince and persuade, all, and you, Minister. And then what I liked as well is, you know, the, the, the video that was played, to have the heads of state. You know, I, I always tell heads of state, you know, they phone me and something that, you know, when I do this, the Afghan goes to this. It doesn't work that way. I do all sorts of things. They say, can you stop doing these funny things? <laughs> because it means nothing. So the point is, um, I, I, uh, I'm part of a team. What is important to all of us is uh, we were excited by the three countries coming together, by your proposition of the infrastructure you have. The, uh, I mean, we've got a full stadium today. The history, the passionate history of football in this part of the world. And, uh, and also our commitment to try and make sure that uh, that uh, we develop talent in, in, in Tanzania. So I think the most important thing is uh, you got it. Uh, it's been allocated to uh, West Africa, uh, East Africa. And of course, we still have work to do because the team still has to come. And, and, and that's partly why I wanted to see the head of state, just to, to make sure that that, that that deep level of commitment I was told she has because that it must translate into resources. You know, we've got a we've got a world class stadium which is beautiful. And and I'm excited by the the commitment I saw from our president uh, and uh, and the good work you are doing minister. Now I'm told that I should go there. Correct president. Yeah. And I'm going to ask some of the Okay, let's go uh, let's go there. So my brother Tavid, let's see if we can make sure that uh, we quickly arrange a photo opportunity first. The CAF president will be joined by the football family and the Minister of Sport in a minute. So President...